uh, we're Iron Palm. I play guitar. Uh, Johnny, I play bass. I'm Kevin. I do vocals. Well, first and foremost, uh, the whole idea behind Iron Palm is vegan outreach. Uh, I think when we started the band, that's what was mostly important to us. And sound wasn't as, as important, uh, and it probably still isn't. Um, so genre-wise, it's just hardcore punk. I mean, the whole purpose of the band's inception was just, like, vegan outreach, and that's it. Like, we we don't have any songs that aren't about veganism at this point. Um, you know, there's, there's different songs, different lyrics have different, like, ideas on veganism, like, as far as, like, different aspects of it. So some are really simple as far as, like, trying to educate, and then some are, like, talking about, like, the culture and... and this, like this, just like the social aspect of it and all that stuff. But everything, every song so far that at least I've written is is about veganism and and its outreach. So, um, actually, Derek put the band together for the most part. Um, Derek and our old bassist Caleb. Um, that was them, really. Yeah, so my current roommate, who's not in the band anymore, a gentleman named Scott, um, he was playing drums, I was playing guitar, and then uh, our buddy Caleb, who actually lives in California now, um, was playing bass, uh, and then Kevin, we always knew we wanted him to do vocals, um, so yeah, I mean, ideally, I think we all kind of joked about like starting like a vegan straight edge band, mm. uh, that wasn't the case though, because a lot of people like drink or smoke weed, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so we just got some vegans together and then when Caleb left the band, we got our buddy Johnny here to start playing bass, um, mm -hmm. on top of, I think two other people. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Johnny's, um, playing bass for us right now. Yeah. We had a little bit of trial and error with, uh, some other members as far as bass, but, um, everyone that's played in our band so far has been like a really close friend. Mm -hmm. Um, all members of other bands out of, out of Vegas, like, as in rain and value and um, oversight, uh, which is a current band right now too that we're going on tour with. And um, but yeah, the original idea was just kind of like we really wanted to do a vegan straight edge band, but we couldn't because Caleb wasn't straight edge, and then our other guitarist Michael isn't straight edge. But we kind of just settled for having a vegan band because at the end of the day, that's the only part that really matters like you know like that's at least the most important part at least even for us being vegan straight edge you know i think we're more determined to talk about veganism than we are about straight edge ever so <laughs> yeah yeah so okay so uh our first show was with a band out of brooklyn called go deep um we played inside of a house uh it was really fun it was like a good turnout um Actually, our first show kind of got a lot of attention, which we were surprised with because uh, being a vegan band, like, we feel like we're the only vegan dudes in Vegas sometimes, you know? Like, we know there's more, but, you know, as far as within hardcore and punk, it's like, there's not many, so we were surprised to get some kind of attention for that. But um, we played kind of a lot of shows this last year. Um, we played with, like, Harm's Way, um... Die Young recently. We played with Die Young, and they were on that tour with uh, Wake of Humanity, right? Yeah. Um, we played with uh, Free at Last. Yeah. Uh, Free 2016 at... was pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. We had some good shows. We did um, we did a really fun benefit show for our drummer, Fidel. Uh, he started Barber School, and um, so we just put together a little fundraiser show to help him raise money for school, and it was a really great turnout, and it was just like four bands uh which were all in like kind of so um oversight acid rain up above and iron palm and fidel literally played four sets in a row which is pretty nuts and then uh but it was it was really fun we had a pretty good year of like really fun shows yeah i say sometimes when you when well when you're in a band that's kind of focused on one thing uh sometimes you think you're going to alienate people but i say like I guess for us, that hasn't really been the case. Mm. I think it started a lot of really cool conversations after sets, and it's just been, I think people have been really, really supportive of what we've been doing. Totally. Uh, 
Um, well, over a site originally uh, set up the tour. And um, the funny thing about Oversight and Iron Palm, our relationship, is that we do share members. But uh, Oversight, I think, gets more attention. And um, not and not in a bad way, but Iron Palm has kind of been like, if Oversight is doing something, Iron Palm is going to be right there with them. Mm. Um, so Oversight doing a tour, it just made sense that Iron Palm would go as well. Um, and it was fortunate for us because Oversight's kind of doing all the work and Iron Palm is just tagging along. Yeah. So... It, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, Oversight's done a lot of stuff really fast. And we were a band for quite a while until we started making moves. We, I mean, I think we were practicing for, like, almost an entire year until we played a show. It was, yeah, yeah but um, Johnny's in Oversight, and, and he puts a lot of hard work into Oversight. And even before he was in Iron Palm, I actually put a ton of work into Iron Palm. If Honestly, if it wasn't for Johnny, even before he was in Iron Palm, we probably wouldn't have even put out our demo like ever <laughs> like like Johnny put in a lot of work for that but um yeah so we just kind of I mean like there's a lot of shows that Oversight will play and we'll just like since we share members we'll just jump on and share their set and play two or three songs as Iron Palm and then Oversight will finish their set or something so uh, this is my first experience ever in a band I, I've never played an instrument I've never written a song before Iron Palm. Um, but um, as far as like goals go for the tour, I I just want to have fun with my friends, really. Like I just want to hang out with these dudes for four days in a row and and uh, have as many personal conversations as I can with, with anyone who listens to us and wants to know anything about veganism or why we're doing it, you know? And, and um, I mean, the shows are obviously going to be a great time. We're playing with some great bands as of what we know so far. But, um, yeah, I just really hope to get in, just meet people and talk and eat some good food on the way and, you know, hang Absolutely. out. Yeah. I think, uh, I would say, like, Oversight and Iron Palm are just kind of like brother bands. Yeah. So I feel like whatever one band does, it's obviously like the other band's going to try to jump on that too. Yeah. Um, but I always think about how when I was younger and you kind of see some, you see some, like, vegan bands and how you're kind of inspired by them. Like, for me, like, when I used to go see like seven generations and gatherings and bands like that, like just blew my mind. And so you hope that, that you go, that you play a show and there's some people that will kind of put you in that same, I guess, caliber in their life. Like I saw this one band, they made me really think about like the way I was living and just, just things like that. So hopefully we can go ahead to California, and, you know, get yeah. some people thinking. Yeah. Hopefully we can. California is a, a pretty, it's like a vegan Mecca, you know, and, and at least for us, you know, we travel there a lot just in our personal lives and find great food and meet a lot of other vegans and get the opportunity to talk about veganism pretty frequently when we're out there. Um, so I don't know that anyone's really going to get any information they don't already have being in hardcore and, and punk and being, and, you know, learning, wondering about veganism, but hardcore punk and bands like Seven Gens and, and uh, Tears of Gaia and Earth Crisis and stuff like they were a huge, huge part of me going vegan in the beginning, you know, and, and I was young and, and stuff like that. So, it, I mean, like, if if we play 100 shows and one person goes vegan in the process because of, you know, anything that any one of our band members can say, then I'd, I'd be completely fulfilled, you know, and, and that's really, like, our only goal, you know. The the fun and, and the laughter and all that stuff, it's it's just a bonus, you know. It's, it's really, like... Sometimes, you know, it doesn't ever feel like work or, or like we're putting in too much like effort because it's a lot of fun and, and we're always with our friends. But, you know, if, if anything ever feels like a payoff, you know, with the tour or with the band or with putting out the demos or T-shirts or whatever we're going to do, like the most fulfilling thing will definitely be if one person says like, oh, you helped me, you know, consider going vegetarian or vegan or anything. Like that's that's the only like fulfillment I'm looking for at least, you know. But also while we're on tour, if we get uh, get into a fist fight over being obnoxiously vegan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kidding. Yeah, hopefully I don't offend anybody. Um, I I try to I try to take like you know in real life you I try as hard as I can to to not offend and to to be like very careful and and cautious in my approach when I talk about veganism and try to relate you know. And because and I know, you know, in a social status, you can't just attack people and you can't tell them, like, 
you're not vegan and you should be and you need to apologize because you're not vegan and you need to change your life and, and no one's going to respond to that kind of attention but I know I know that that's not the way it happens when you talk to people so all those feelings that I've had and, and wanting to say that out loud I do when we play and it's kind of because I feel like if I ever have the opportunity to be an aggressive asshole about veganism it's when I have a microphone and it's like when I have the venue to be that person, you know, and sometimes, you know, I think I can come off a little aggressive when I talk about it, but it's just like, these are the true feelings, but, but, um, the approach is just a little bit more magnified and, and more like, you know, like express a lot more aggressively in on stage, but we're, we're pretty timid and we're pretty understanding people and we're, we're pretty careful when we talk, you know, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, I hope to offend and not to offend at the same time, but you know, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I don't think that there's, a, and I want to say this gently without making it sound like I'm talking crap, but um, Las Vegas, in my mind, has always been like uh, a place for new guy hardcore kids to come to. Um, it's, it's very safe in the way that like, if you roll up looking the right way and dancing the right way, uh, you'll fit in, um, which I guess is fine. Um, but there's no bands really in Las Vegas hardcore that are uh, pushing any social or political message, mm -hmm. uh, which has always, always been very important to me and I know to a lot of my friends. Um, so we have a lot of bands that are kind of just like your regular two-steppy bands, um, mm -hmm. not really challenging anybody mentally. Uh, and then I think that's the, the reason Iron Palm kind of, there's like Las Vegas Hardcore and then Iron Palm, mm -hmm. uh, because we're the only band pushing an ethical message. Um, but we still consider ourselves part of Las Vegas Hardcore. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, actually, we were talking about this last night. I, I recently made some friends uh, that have been in the hardcore scene in Vegas for as long as I have, you know, and, and I was surprised because I was like, you know, I never met you when you grew up in the same area of Las Vegas. And, you know, I started going to shows in Vegas in like 2004, 2005. Um, and it's it's changed pretty drastically, I think, especially with bands like us and, and Overside and Up Above and Acid Rain. And and there's this whole, this new generation. And, and you know, I remember in, in, in the early years of me going, seeing these really like bloody, really like, aggressive violent like i mean like watching people get taken away in ambulances you know frequently like that was like a casual thing you know it was like normal to see like seven eight nine fights in one night you know and and um i think i think we've you know we still have you know a problem with with you know and, and any hardcore scene violence has its place i guess unfortunately but but um i think we've all grown you know, to, to take a, l a little bit better care of hardcore here, at least with, with our current bands. And, you know, we don't really see too many fights anymore. We don't really see too much, like, bad attitude. I think, you know, with the times, people are a little bit more, like, conscious of, you know, like, social injustices and, and you know, like, rights issues. And so people are generally pretty respectful. Um, I, I, was, I was expecting to get a lot of, like, heckling, uh, as as a vegan band, um, but I mean to this day we we've, we've uh, gotten nothing but respect and, and nothing but like appreciation and it's it's honestly it's good it's it's I mean it's as best it's as best as I've ever known it so I mean that's I guess says something yeah definitely I'm definitely enjoying going to shows now than when I first moved here mm -hmm. um, and I think a part of it like is uh, like what you guys were saying about like just this is going to sound silly, but like with Iron Palm and Oversight, I think like just what we focus on is kind of like for me, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air because that's what I'm used to as a product of like California punk as more, um, people being more aware of, of things like that. And I think when I first moved here, I didn't really see much of that. And I thought that was really missing. And, um, again, like what Kevin was saying, like just the response we've been getting from people has been like really cool. I'd say something that stands out for me was even when we played like a uh, public us, just people oh, yeah. who weren't even aware of like punk bands that were going on, but still were super into what we were doing. And I think I, I even met quite a few people that night that yeah. approached us and had some questions. So 
Yeah, we, we played this show. So Public Us is like a coffee house out here. Um, kind of trendy, like pretty cool coffee house, I guess. Um, but um, we played a show with like a DJ. It was like a kid who like makes beats on his like tablet or something. I don't really know. But I guess it's dubstep. Yeah, like <laughs> dubstep. Sure. And, and uh, a friend of ours, our friend Vivian, she asked us to play. And, and she'd seen us before. So we were like, are you sure you want us to play? Like, are you sure that's what you want? But... She asked us to play, and, and we, you know, we played for her, and, and um, like, the response was great. Like, there was, like, a lot of people there who you could tell had never listened to anything, you know, related to punk ever, related to hardcore ever, and so um, it was really cool. It was, like, a really good experience. It was, like, um, people were really responsive, and, and uh, it was really different. Like, that's all I can really call it, I guess, like. People were responsive. We had I had people after the show asking us questions and and asking kind of what we were doing. And we uh, it was an all girls art show, so I think there was maybe seven artists. They were all girls, and um, that was really cool. You know, like things like that don't happen too frequently in Vegas. Like it's kind of a cultural wasteland out here. Um, there's not a lot of room for like art and music and and you know the culture the cultural things, and so. When we got asked to play it, you know, I was open to it because really we're open to play anything because everything feels like an opportunity to talk about veganism and so we take it, you know. And uh, but to be put in in something that I felt like was pushing this like great cultural agenda on people and to to promote art and especially women's art, you know, um, was really cool. And so we we covered Rebel Girl that night, um, which was really cool. And it was fun. It was really it was really exciting. So. I think that is a great example of how much hardcore has changed in Vegas. Like a hardcore band playing anything like that ten years ago was unheard of. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there was nothing like that. So hardcore is cool, I guess. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the strategy is to write it out as long as possible, <laughs> yeah. and then once we've exhausted that option, we just have to find a new spot to go to. Uh, Las Vegas is very weird since we are the entertainment entertainment capital of the world. Um, there's a lot of weird local laws. Like, just it wasn't even just until last year that I realized that if if you're if you're an own venue and um, you want to sell alcohol, you can't have moshu. Which is fucking crazy. Like I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't even know that. So we had a, we had a venue called MDB out here where they next door they sold alcohol and then there was a place where they had shows and um, obviously they wanted to profit off alcohol sales so they couldn't have moshing. I don't know how that works out, but uh, that venue did not last very long because of that reason. Um, and then you know. There's been a lot of like DIY efforts. We had a place out here way back in the day called Community of Friends, mm-hmm. and it was beautiful. Um, all kinds of shows happened there, and it, it things went pretty well for I think a little over a year. And then we had X-ray Specs play there, and then um, I think some kid like OD'd outside of there, and then it, it just got shut down after that. I forget the story, but. Uh, again, you just exhaust your options, and then you kind of have to like move to a house. Yeah. Um, right now, we have the womb room, which you've been to, and then we have a place called Garth, which is just a warehouse, and it's uh, it's still there. So those are our only two options really right now, unfortunately. Uh, St. Garth is uh, it's like kind of far, like on the far side of town, like it's it's like really far north. Um, but uh, it's cool. It's literally in like a in like a strip of warehouses like there's it's like complete solitude like there's like nothing around there like it's like it's very really, ideal it's really it's dark right the dome, it's right next to the dome <laughs> yeah. um there's like a ton of construction going on around there all the time so but um yeah i mean like i mentioned i've been going to shows out here for a pretty long time and venues don't really last um i i feel like i don't really know of like a a venue out here that's ever been like 21 and over that's having punk and hardcore shows. Like, I mean, I know there's like 
We have bar shows. Yeah, we have some bar shows, but I, I feel like it doesn't happen too much. At least not with the kind of hardcore something, something noteworthy. Yeah, or something that we play, or something that we would play, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, most places are cool, you know. Eastside Joe's just closed this year, which was it's, a, it's kind of a tragedy, you know. Like we've we, we, I've been going to Eastside Joe's since I was really young, and you know I've seen really great bands there. You know, we saw Trash Talk and The Mongoloids and. And you know, like, Vitamin X. Yeah, like it's great, great cool. bands have played Eastside Joe's, and that place was great. It, you know, it got a little crazy for a while, but but um, yeah, I think we just do what we can. Like a lot of house shows. I think Iron Palm alone has played like two or three house shows, like out of the really short time we've been a band, and that's pretty much it. I'd say like, Las Vegas, at least in my experience, is pretty similar to a lot of other cities where. Um, kids just do what they can just because a lot of places aren't very welcoming of a lot of punk and hardcore bands in, in ways um, it's not the biggest money draw it's not the most like well mannered sometimes yeah. so you know sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and you, you know you keep your space as well you can and I think that's why like Garth is just because there's not too much around there like you really have to hunt for it sometimes I think yeah. the first time I went there I, had, I drove by it a couple times yeah. not knowing exactly where it was um but yeah, I'd say it's pretty it's pretty similar in, in respect to like lots of other cities where people just kind of you know they do what they can. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty DIY. You know, like I know California and you know surrounding states have a lot of you know opportunities for like you know shows in like Austin, Texas, and stuff. You know, they they always have venues, they have their spaces, and California is big time. You know, like I've never been to a house show in in LA, but um, like. Here it's it's very just scraping by, you know. Yeah. But we're here, <laughs> trying to be. <laughs> Actually, one of my first biggest hardcore shows was like Curl Up and Die, which is like a Vegas like big time band. Like they were like you know one of the better bands to come out of Vegas and like Faded Gray. I think Ed Gein played that show. Um. We used to have this weird little place called Balcony Lights. It was like a bookstore um, over near, like, in the University Crest, where, like, the, the university is. And uh, there was, like, a lot of really cool shows happening back then. But they, they used to do, like, desert shows and things like that. That's, like, kind of all they had back then after, like, a lot of stuff. But they were pretty cool. It's kind of... I was, like, I was young, so I didn't, you know... Like, it's pretty dangerous. Something yeah. very tragic happened, actually, uh, where... There was a show, and there used to be a skinhead presence in Las Vegas, mm. and I guess there was uh, some kid who, who got into an argument with some skinheads out at, at a cave show. They called them cave shows, and on the way out of the desert, the skinheads uh, beat the kid up to death. Um, so after that, I think people were a little weary of going out there, and um, there's no skinhead presence uh, in, in Las Vegas anymore. Um, but also it's just difficult, like getting a generator and getting people to go out there. Yeah. Um, punch, uh, who everybody knows played a cave show out here and, um, nobody came. And after that, I tried to get punch. I tried to book them out here a, a thousand times and they just kept bringing up the cave shows. <laughs> They're like, Oh yeah, we played a cave and nobody showed up. So no thanks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no more cave shows. I don't think we're really picky. Yeah. Um, uh, again, kind of, uh, you know, repeating myself, punk and hardcore should always be a place that is challenging uh, on some type of le- level uh, with current issues. Um, so for me, ideally, I would like to play with bands that have something to say. Mm. Um, and uh, usually that means bands that are fronted by women, people of color, uh, or even people that just have something to promote, like veganism, or even uh, sobriety, straight edge, because uh, even that can be considered a political message um, to some degree. So that's what I would like to do, but um, I don't think we're very picky, no. Yeah, we, we like I said, we play every show. I literally, I think it's if if we book a show without oversight, it's kind of like, why did we do that? Like, we, we, <laughs> we literally, like, we played almost every show that we've played we've played with oversight since we, since oversight started, but oversight has, you know, really great messages also. And, and, you know, they, um, 
they cover, you know, like issues on like, you know, the gay issues and, and, you know, being of color and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, I mean, really we, we haven't been a band long enough, I think, to really have a, 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 a preference with who we play with. We've just really played with everyone we can and, and, um, like, that's pretty much it. Like, anyone who can come through, if we can get on, you know, we will. And, and like I said, every show is an opportunity to reach someone's ears. And, and I try, you know, for anyone who's seen Iron Palm more than once, they've probably heard me, you know, just, you know, describe the same song or, you know, and, or what they mean. But, but, um, you know, every song is an opportunity to reach a set of ears that can potentially hear the word vegan for the first time, you know, and, and wonder what that is. And so, as, as far as I go personally, like, I don't care. We'll play with anyone. We'll, we'll play with anyone who will give us a microphone and, and an amp and, and let us talk our bullshit, you know? <laughs> um, I think naturally we're just more comfortable, obviously, with, like, punk and hardcore bands. Right. But kind of going back to our, our public us experience, yeah. <laughs> it's probably a greater value uh, for us as a band with our message to play with bands we're probably not comfortable with sometimes. Yeah. Um, we are currently on Bandcamp, um, what is it, ironpalmlv.bandcamp, mm-hmm. ironpalmlv.bandcamp, uh, we were selling demos, we had tapes, um, we only made 50 and they sold out, um, I, I think we're considering making more, we should have some more for the tour, um, if hopefully not other stuff by then, we're, we're, we're kind of hoping to have maybe a promo out for the tour, um, which hopefully is in a tangible format, um, probably cassette, just being the easiest and the fastest that we can produce. Um, and then uh, that's all we've really ever made. We we've, we've really only ever put out the demo and and that and the, the on tape. Um, but for anybody who ever watches this that doesn't know who we are, it is on Bandcamp for free. Yeah, so it's free. Please go download it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on, Ty. Um, like the best thing ever, best restaurant in the world. Um, they're like family. I've been going there since I went vegan, um, you know, almost 15 years ago, and like we ate there last night, and there was like a 22 person party. We were just like crowding up the whole place. And they, I wasn't was invited. invited to that. He wasn't invited. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, come on. Um. Uh, I just had Veggie Delight, which is like a sandwich joint, um, Veggie House, uh, Violence Vegan. Vegas is doing pretty good for like yeah, vegan yeah. foods. I mean, we're no, you know, we're no LA, oh, yeah, but uh, we're doing okay. Yeah, we got Ronald's Donuts for anyone who comes out here. That's like almost entirely all vegan donut shop. That's like ran by this old Chinese couple who I don't think really even know the word vegan but they just happened to make vegan donuts. And so when people got word that the donuts were vegan, like you would just ask them like, what's vegan today? And it's almost always like everything they have. Yeah. Um, they taste like, like the little hole in the wall, 24 hour donut shop. Yeah. It's it awesome. It's out of control. Like it, it's to the point where I've had to like question, like maybe they don't know what vegan means. <laughs> and like, they're just like, you know, telling us it's vegan, but it's like unreal, like just great, like classic donuts. Really good. A fun fact is I know Davey Habit questioned them, actually went to their kitchen and watched them make them, and seems like, yeah, oh yeah, these are vegan. That's us. I didn't yeah. even know. <laughs> um, as far as other bands go in Vegas, um, Moonblood, <clears throat> our friends in Moonblood, um, fronted by our great, our good friend Sinead, um, Vegan Straight Edge Girl. Um, Presagers. Presagers, those yeah. are the homies. Which forever. are currently, they just became a straight edge band. Everybody in the band is now straight edge, so Presagers, check them out. Didn't even know that. Las Vegas no, straight edge. Dude, that's yeah. sick. Um, shout out to Gabe and Jed and all those dudes. They're just the homies forever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the Killers are a pretty good band. <laughs> from out here. Yeah, Shamir. Um, uh, I might have heard Panic at the Disco. Yeah, they're sick. Yeah. Right. Neo went to high school out here. So shout out to Dude, Neo. Jenny Lewis too. What's up? <laughs> Jenny Lewis hit me up. Um, Oversight, obviously. Oversight and Up Above and um, Acid Rain's having their final show uh, for our tour kickoff. Um, 
really. Back to food. Dude, um, food. Taco y taco. Taco y taco. And Mothership Coffee. I went to Vesta. Dude, coffee, coffee that was good. I'm a coffee nut. I think we have great coffee here. Coffee's bullshit. Coffee's terrific. <laughs> it's Pizza <laughs> Company. Pizza Dude, company. shout out, yeah. Pizza Company is a jam. Um, and also, our dirt out here is pretty flavorful, so... <laughs> <laughs> Come try our vegan dirt. Yeah.